In today's comic, we go back to Luna and Celestia's past, where they encounter the most horrifying creature of all, the Karen! Oh, whoops, sorry. I meant the Kraken! <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to tell the difference between both monsters. hi -yo! OBJECTION! Every pony, I'm Master Code, your ace analyst, and today we'll be looking at issue number 98 of the main IDW series, season 10, episode 10. So we start off with with Oh my gosh, you're so cute! Look how cute they are, look at it! <clears throat> anyway, we catch up with Luna and Celestia's home in Shady Shoals, where Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash bring an old painting from their castle as young foals with dolls of themselves. Though, this gift greatly saddens Celestia, bringing up a traumatic event from her past. Apparently, protecting these long-lost dolls were their first test as future rulers of Equestria. Alright, right away, I got a problem with this setup. Now, don't get me wrong, childhood trauma can have a massive negative effect on anyone. It could last their whole life, or it could be blocked from one's memories one day manifest itself in the future by some inciting incident or visual cue. It's a serious problem that many can relate to, and I applaud the comic for tackling such mature themes. The problem is, this is Princess Celestia we're talking about. A mare who, as a quote-unquote teenager, was almost killed in an alternate realm by horrible nightmarish creatures. The mare, who later in life had no choice but to make the ultimate decision to banish her sister Luna to the moon for a thousand years to save Equestria. The mare who lost her first and only love, King Sombra, the one who provided Celestia support in her time of need after banishing her sister, resulting in an emotional sacrifice to save Celestia's world and could never see him again, adding more to her emotional scars. Yet she is weeping over the loss of these dolls. I could buy that she would be mildly upset or bothered remembering her full hood trauma, but she's acting like a close friend or family member died. You were the princess of Equestria for over a thousand years. You've seen such horrible atrocities and empires nearly collapsing, and yet this is the thing that breaks you? Turning you into a weeping child? Celeste Bronfman is the first time author for the MLP IDW series, and it really shows that she is severely unfamiliar with the series for the reasons I just noted. Along with that, the story doesn't really utilize Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy well. Yes, some of Fluttershy's dialogue does provide helpful insight and exposition, but for the most part, they're pretty much just there for setting up the story, and even before the halfway point of the comic, they're gone. So now, let's take a look at the day of infamy in question. Luna, Celestia, and Star Swirl are sailing on the Crystal Sea when all of a sudden, everything goes wrong. What did you do, Ray? Oh, shit! And the legendary Kraken rises from the depths. Oh, wait, 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 it's okay, guys. It just wants to challenge us to a race. I challenge you to a race. Anyway, it grabs the sisters, causing them to drop their dolls and leaving them stranded on a mysterious island. Now that would be awesome. Though I disagree with Celestia's characterization, I do like how Luna is written. It's interesting how the usually more younger and naive sister is now taking the proactive approach to get Celestia out of her whiny funk. True, she's kind of forcing Celestia's hoof to go on a suicide recovery mission for the two dolls, but hey, sometimes drastic measures are needed to help some pony. So the two descend into the not-so-jolly Roger Bay, where they come across numerous wrecks and lost items. But soon, once again, the Kraken rises from the depths to confront the sisters. Hi! They're grabbed by the giant creature once again, but it turns out it was just saving them from a deadly whirlpool, just like when they were foals. And of course, any pony would be so grateful for saving their life, so obviously Celestia acts hostile towards it. I kill you! Our former princess and diplomatic leader of Equestria, folks. 
And look, it even gives them back their dolls. And it was all just a big misunderstanding, just like Fluttershy hinted at the beginning. And Celestia learned not to judge a book by its cover and came to terms with her full hood trauma. Overall, the resolution is okay. It's just the missteps at the beginning that take the punch out of this comic. And pretty much that's my final feelings about this comic. At best, it's okay. Other times, it's characterization and plot leave the reader questioning what they just read. And this story can work. You can keep the whole story of Celestia and Luna encountering the crack in his foals and losing their dolls. And in the present, you can have Celestia reading a journal, perhaps recalling that moment. She can be mildly upset remembering that day, enter Luna, and the two would have a little emotional moment recalling the attack. They would be happy that they and every pony else survived the attack, and then have Celestia take charge and investigate this matter to ensure that this doesn't happen again. The Kraken saves them once again from the whirlpool, discovering why the Kraken did it, and the comic concludes with the sisters having closure and peace with the giant creature. So that was Season 10, Episode 10. What did you guys think? Was Celestia's sadness justified, or did it just come off as odd for the former ruler of Equestria? Let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or any other observations you guys know noticed. Well, that's it for today, guys. Until next time, and see ya!